Yeah. 39 books. Yeah. Come on. Yo. Uh. Seek ye out the book of Yah and read. Speak these words to plant your holy seed. Obey his voice, know him and believe. Understand his Yah is none but he. In the beginning, he told us the ending that we wasn't winning because of the sin in the 400 centuries of Yah's descendants. Either repentance and this is our genesis. To our exodus in Leviticus. Learn to put some respect on this so we can number our days. The teachers that we was the slaves in Deuteronomy 28. The most popular when he anointed Joshua. It's proven that Yah loved us by sending his judges, rejecting the grudges, embracing the truth of the nations. The truth is shown through Ruth, the woman that David come through. Pete Samuel 1 and 2. Yah's chosen the kings and you won too. Recognition chronicles in the first and the second. And Ezra Hakohain, fast by the river Ahaba, stood with Nehemiah in the time of Hadassah, better known as Esther. Job struck with disease and boils that festered. And we giving our alms while singing Hebrew songs. The most wisest words are spoken in Proverbs. The collect, the teacher, ecclesiastical preacher. Fellas wanna reach up, quote the song. The songs belong to Solomon. Understand the way that I'm on. Isaiah, Jeremiah, lamenting when Jerusalem fell. Also seen by Ezekiel. Vision vividly given to Daniel. God said to turn to him in prayer. Remember Hosea. If we call on Yahweh, he'll remember us well. Spoken by your El. And this has been 39 books given to you by Isha Melaka. Seek ye out the book of Yah and read. Speak these words to plant your holy seed. Obey his voice, know him man believe. Understand his Yah is none but he. Seek ye out the book of Yah and read. Speak these words to plant your holy seed. Obey his voice, know him man believe. Understand his Yah is none but he. Seek ye out the book of Yah. Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, give it all praise and honor to the Holy One of Israel, to the creator of the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is there and is by saying hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yah. Yah is righteous. Yah is holy. And let Yahweh be magnified. Once again, the creator has allowed us to come before you another week, another day, Bringing to you his great, holy, and exalted words, even the words of truth. My name is Moray Ishaya Yisrael of the House of Israel, located right here, 2330 Kemper Lane, or Cincinnati, Ohio, 2330 Kemper Lane, bringing to you nothing but the truth. And yes, it is true. All we're going to do is tell you the truth. For y'all ordained me to tell you the truth, and this is what I'm going to do. But who is this Yah? Yah is the creator of the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is there and is. Yah is the Elohim of our fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, Yisak, and Yisrael, whom you may know as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yah is our king. He's our judge. He's our lawgiver. And Yah is our only Savior, and not just of Israel. Yah is the Savior of the world. And I praise the mighty Yah for this beautiful, great opportunity, once again, to come before you with his great, holy, and exalted words. 
Last week, as I brought to your attention, that we will be dealing with the signs of Yahweh. Not just his signs, but his secret signs. And dealing with these secret signs, it would take us approximately about seven weeks to deal with them. And this is the second week of the seven weeks that we will deal with these signs. Last week, we dealt with the sign of 3, 10, 17, and 24, because they all are, are of the same order or the same makeup. And why? Because 3 is the foundation, but 10, 17, 24, although they're a little bit different, and all the other numbers <clears throat> that's in that order have some differences. But the foundation is <clears throat> sanctification. And that's important to know. Because that is the foundation, being set apart. That's what sanctification is. It's just separating you. Setting you apart for the purposes of the Most High. Like he said, leave our part from the tribes. He said, um, Israel apart from the other nations. Uh, set the Sabbath day apart from the other days of the week. This is what Yahweh will do. And like he himself set himself apart from Anything in heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is therein is. And Yahweh will set a sign to demonstrate, to show your separation. And so that's what the third represent, three represent. And ten just, the difference, ten just represent the sanctification and holiness. 17 just represents the, the sanctification as his servant or selected place of desire. 24 represent his sanctification in covenant or dedication, as we read last week. All those signs were signs that fell upon the Sabbath day. The third was the very first Sabbath of the very first month. And of course, 10 was the second Sabbath, 17 was the third Sabbath, and 24 was the fourth Sabbath of that very first month, first season, first year. And there was no more Sabbaths until you got and get to the second month. And that's where we're at this week. This week, we're talking about the Sabbaths of the second month of the first season, of the first year, of the uh, second month. That's what we're talking about this week. The dates of those Sabbaths is 1, 8, 15, 22, and 29. And what I will show you concerning the very first order and the very first thing is one. Because you're going to see just like three. It is the foundation of all the other orders. Even though they all are slightly different from one another, one is the foundation. 
And what you're going to see about one is really the foundation thing that brings everything to order. Just like the scripture says, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the chief thing. Wisdom is the head thing. But with all thy getting, get understanding. And you're going to see this one as a chief thing. So let's get into the secret, Yahweh's secret signs of one. Now there shouldn't be a mystery, really, what Yahweh did on day one. A lot of people call this day Rishon, which just means the first. But no, he didn't call it Rishon. He called it Ekad. So during the various weeks and people talking about the very first day of the week, they don't talk like Yahweh. They would say, Yom Rishon. But Yahweh say, Yom Echad. And it has a difference between Yom Echad and Yom Rishon. They have a lot of similarities, but they are different. But here in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, where you will read about this Yom Echad. But let's see is this Yom Echad, how did it get its name? How did it get its name? What does it represent? What is its purpose? And what is the sign of this day? In the book of Genesis, the first chapter, this is what it says. And I'm going to get right to it. Well, we'll read. Uh, yeah, let me just get right to it. In the third verse. And Elohim said, let there be light. In other words, all, anything before this, this is the very first thing that came out of Yahweh's mouth. All the other stuff, it never said, and Elohim said, but these, this is the first two verses is giving you the commentary of what Moses was saying about what you're about to read. But this is what the Most High said in the third verse, and Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. <clears throat> and Elohim saw the light. That it was good. There was some goodness in this light. And Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And one of the things you want to notice that you will never see where Yahweh say, and he saw the darkness and he, he saw that the darkness was good, even though Yahweh said everything he made was very good. Just like evil, he made that very good. But he saw this light, that it was good. Undoubtedly, it was good for his creation. It was good for the inhabitants of the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that therein is. And Elohim separated, divided the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day. He would even name the light. The darkness he called night. He named it also. 
And then, after doing this, because this is part of what he made. This is part of his creation. This is part in the beginning of his work. Then he said, in the evening and the morning were Yom Echad, or Echad Yom, which just means one day. One day. And you notice that when the creator said this, he didn't say it at the beginning when he started creating. He said it when he was completed. He had it made. He had worked. He was done. And then he declared the evening, which is the end of a day, and the morning, which is the beginning of another day. And we're going to talk about that, but not today. So Yom, or this Or, which is the Hebrew word for light, now it has a name. The name is day. Even though everywhere in the scriptures it has used the word day, or Yom, which is the Hebrew name for day, a uh, word for day, but there are many scriptures where Yahweh wanted you to have a clear cut understanding of what he's saying, so he still used the word light. But you're going to see these words synonymous with one another, but day. Is not the only light. But you're going to see how important this light is in the sign of this, this light. And I can let you know what that is. The sign of this light is one. It's one. Here the creator lets us know that this light is a sign if you go to the book of Exodus, the 10th chapter, and watch what this says. Exodus 10. And I'll show you what this light is for. In the book of Exodus 10, we're talking about the secret sign of one and why one. Because that's when Yahweh made light. On day one, he made light. And why did he make this light? What are we to get out of? Are we to just get out of this light? Uh, Now we can see? Well, that's definitely the most important thing about this light is that we're able to see. But we're not just able to see one another, we able to see spiritually. We are even able to see in the darkness. We able to see things that no other creation can see other than his heavenly host. But the animals, the bees, the creepy things, the fowl, they can't. See spiritually the things that we can see? In the book of Exodus, the 10th chapter, this is what it says. In the 23rd verse. We'll start at 22. It says, And Moshe stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another. Neither rose any from his place for three days. I mean, that's how dark it was. How can that be good? You can't see each other. You can't see nothing. Matter of fact, the scriptures that tell you that it was so dark they can even feel it. 
But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. They had light. But the Egyptians, three days of darkness, and that is a sign. But this light is a greater sign than that. And I want you to count the things that the creator said he even made the light for. And watch what he says. And when was the light made? I don't want you to forget that. It was made. Day one, Yom Echad, day one. And that's important to know because it was that day when Yahweh ushered, made, created, formed this light. He just didn't form it, make it, create it for one purpose. Watch this purpose. One of the purpose that Yahweh made this light in the book of Psalms 119. And we're talking about Yahweh secret signs of one. In the book of Psalms 119. And watch what this says in verse 105. Now, Psalms 119 is a long verse, and it is a probably it is the longest verses, longest chapter in the book. 176 verses. And we're gonna read verse 105. Five. Watch what it says. <laughs> Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. See, in other words, in order for us to walk in the light of Yah, we got to have light from him. And he said, this light it is for our path, but it is the lamp unto my feet. But not just this light, his word. His word. And I'm going to show you and prove to you, you don't even need the light of day. You don't even need the sun, moon, and stars. And Yahweh will demonstrate and show you his light that comes from him and him only. Not only that's all you need, but in the future, that's all you will have. Here it is in this same Psalm 119. Look at verse 130. And this is why his word is so profound. Watch what it says. The entrance of thy words give it light. And what did Yahweh say on day one? Let there be light. So as soon as his word came in, there was light. And why light? Because this light <coughs> that was ushered in, it was ushered in for a purpose. It represented something. It was a sign of something. And watch what it does. The entrance of thy words give it light. It give it understanding unto the simple. That's what happens when you have light. The light of Yahweh. You begin to understand things. 
because that's one of the things the light do. It's not just a sign. It's just not something made for you to see physically, but it gives you understanding so that you can see spiritually. But what produced this light? Yahweh's word. That's why every team, every time you read his word, when you commit yourself unto this word, you storing up light. And light is energy. There is no greater energy that one can possess. And that is light. And not only do it gives you understanding. Watch what it says in the book of Psalms 97. And I want you to see this. It gives you understanding. But watch this. Psalm 97. And this talking about what Yahweh did in day one, the, the, what you would call the first thing he said, the first thing he did is said, let there be light. And then light, and then the scripture say, and there was light. Watch this. This same light that was made and ushered in on that day one, the 11th verse says, light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. So the light in of itself, it was planted, it was made, it was formed, not just for you to be able to see, not just for to give you understanding, it was sown for the righteous. So now, not only you can see, you can have understanding. And not only you have understanding, you can even Learn righteousness now because it's sown for the righteous. You think you can become righteous without light? No, light is essential for righteousness, for understanding, and for light or for sight to be able to see. Another thing that the light is formed for, which was made on day one. And I want to keep repeating that so you'll know what came. Because we think the only thing Yahweh did on day one is give us light. But do we understand what came with that light that Yahweh gave us? Watch this in the book of Psalms 112. We see, it give it allows us to see, give us understanding. And it was even formed and made for the righteous. Watch this. Psalms 112, and we're going to read verse 4. Unto the upright, unto Yashor, Yashar. Uh, The book of the upright. The only book that talk about the upright is the Holy Scriptures. All through the Scriptures it says something about the upright. These other books don't talk about the upright like this book. And the book they say talk about it, no. 
This is that. As a matter of fact, that book put down the upright. This is the book of the upright. Unto the upright. There arises light. For who? The upright. In the darkness, even when it's dark, light come as a result of the upright. He is gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. Because this is what Yahweh brought us light for. He brought us light for this. To see, for righteousness, for uprightness, and of course, all that emanates as a result of his word because the entrance of his word gives light. Furthermore, not just that. Watch what the book of Proverbs teach us. Proverbs, the sixth chapter. So when in day one, when Yahweh said, let there be light, and there was light. Look at all the things that was ushered in. Look at all the things that the light contained, the light was purposed for. In the book of Proverbs, the sixth chapter, this is what it says in the 23rd verse. For the commandment is a lamp. In other words, is light. And the law is light. And reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So we see here the commandment, the law also came. I mean, the law, the commandments, righteousness, upright, all from his word. So the light is not some insignificant thing by no stretch of the imagination. You have people talking about, man, who cares about day and night? The upright, the righteous, the commandment keepers, the law doers, those who want to see things. And not just see things, but even hidden things. You got to have light. That's who care about day. Since the light was called day, let there be ore. And he called the ore yom. Yeah, that's who cares. And what also is light? To see righteousness, upright, commandment, law, and the word. But watch this. In the book of Isaiah, the 51st verse. Isaiah 51. And this is what it says. A in the fourth verse, hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, <clears throat> and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. In other words, here it is, we got this light. And little do people know where you think his judgment is coming from. The light, his commandment, the light, the law, 
the light. The testimonies of Yahweh. The light. The upright things that you would do. The light. Because what is the light? Where do the light come from? Yahweh's word. The entrance of your word. Give it light. So the light is no outside thing that's separated from the Mosa. It is made, it is created, it is formed, it is designed to bring forth light from his word. And who did he give his word to? Watch what the scriptures say in the book. Once again, Psalms. Psalms 147. And look who Yahweh said he gave his word to. Because then you will see who bears Yahweh's light. In the book of Psalm 147. And watch what it says. The 19th verse. He showeth his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as far as his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye Yah. Yeah, when he show his word unto Jacob and his statutes and judgments unto Israel, he gave them his light. He instituted light for them because this light <clears throat> contained the word of Yahweh. And there's nothing like his word. So there's light. When he gave it to Jacob, when he gave it to Israel, let me show you what this, this, this light not only have done, not only is doing, but what it will do. So, for example, go to the book of Daniel. Daniel, the fifth chapter. I just want you to see what it means. <clears throat> the understanding of this, this light that was produced, made, formed on day one. Of creation. Why they won? Because that's when Yahweh said, Let there be light. Let there be or. Let there be light, and there was light. But our people just see it as it's just light, it's just daylight. No. This is why we teaching this. Because we want you to show you the sign of Yahweh. In the book of Daniel, the fifth chapter. And this is what it says in the 11th verse. I'm going to read 10 and 11 so you can understand what this is saying. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house. And this queen spoke and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom. In whom 
is the spirit of the holy Elohims. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, light the wisdom of the Elohims was found in him. Whom the king never can neither thy father. The king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting the dreams, showing the far sentences. Dissolving of doubts were found in this same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Because what was found in this Daniel? Light. What was special about this Daniel? He had light in him. He had so much light in him <clears throat> that he was compared to the holy Elohims. In other words, he was compared to the angels, heavenly souls. That's who he was compared to because of this light. This same light was put in him to be an instrument of light in the earth. See, last week, we dealt with how one will be sanctified, set apart, and Daniel was set apart. But why? And we showed the sign of how one is set apart. And that's what Yahweh here set you apart. But then you will begin to fulfill the very thing that you set apart for. See, first we had to do, say, let you know, oh, you set apart. Just like Abraham. He was separated his family, separated from his kinfolk, from his family, his, his near kin. And once he was set apart, then Yahweh would do wonders with him. Moses was set apart. But once he was alone, then Yahweh began to fulfill the very thing that he did with him. So you produce this light after Yahweh set you apart. And this is what's going on with Daniel. Now, mind you, Daniel is in captivity. So it ain't like he was in no special place. He was a captive. Yahweh wanted you to see this when this man was at his lowest estate. I can see if he was showing you this man while he was in Jerusalem, while he was in his own land. While he was a free man, no, he's showing you a man that has the light of the holy Elohims in captivity. And watch what it says about this, this great man. We read the 11th verse, but watch what it says. Thirteen verse. Then was Daniel brought in before the king. And the king spoke and said unto Daniel, Are thou that Daniel, which are of the children of the captivity of Yehuda, whom the king, my father, brought out of, you notice it say jewelry in the King James. Why, why did he put that word? 
They just got finished saying the captivity of Judah. Why couldn't it just say my father brought out of Judah? Why couldn't it say my father brought out of Israel? But it's a jewelry. I just want you to see these things because the Almighty said it is the glory of Yah to conceal a thing, the honor of kings to search it out. So you got to search out things that you're reading. But watch this, 14 verse. I have even heard of thee, I heard of thee, that the spirit of the Elohim is in thee. And that light, once again, here go this light again. And understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And ask yourself, is light found in you? Are you giving off the light of Yah when you speak to people? Are you showing them this light? Because Yahweh said he saw that the light was good. And surely if you got light in you, are you demonstrating and showing the goodness that is contained in Daniel? Because the goodness that's contained in Daniel is called light. Watch what he says. Fifteen verse. And now the wise men, the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I've heard of thee that thou canst canst make interpretations, dissolve doubts, that if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Of course, this didn't impress Daniel because he had already been doing this. And at the end of the day, why the third ruler? Consider that. Since we just got finished talking about the third. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. And how was he able to know this? Because of Yahweh. That's why. Because light was seen in him. This is what happens when light is seen in you. And who gives this light? Yahweh. Yahweh is the one that gives this light. And this light is important. And it is the same light that Yahweh said, let there be light. Now, how do I know it's the same light? Because the scripture says, the entrance of thy word give it light. Watch this in the book of Daniel, the second chapter. And Yahweh's word entered in on day one. It says, Daniel 2, and we're going to read
the 22nd verse. Because this is what that light does. He said, he revealeth the deep and secret things. That's what Yahweh will do. He know what is in the darkness. And the light dwelleth with him. The light dwells with Yahweh. And so in order for you to get this light, you got to go to Yahweh. You got to be one, a God, with Yahweh. Because the word is a God. The law is a God. Yahweh is a God. And so you have to be a God with him. Here it is again in the book of Isaiah talking about this light. Watch this. In the book of Isaiah. And we're going to read look how instrumental this light is and how you must even come to the understanding of this light. It says in Isaiah 42 and 1 Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect and whom my soul delighteth. I put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Now, can you do anything like this without light? Watch what it says. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth. And the owl shall wait for his law. Thus said Elohim, Yahweh, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that give a breath unto the people upon it and a spirit to them that walk therein. I, Yahweh, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. So Yahweh serve it. It's even going to be light for the Gentiles. And why? Because it was his servant, just like Daniel, who was Yahweh's servant, that put light in them. And what does this light produce? Laws, commandments, statutes, judgments, righteousness, Understanding, wisdom, it produced all these things that one need to have light. So this light is not just in heaven. No, this light is in the word that he gave. And that word supposed to be in your heart, in your soul. And it produced light. The more you know, the more you understand, the 
the more the light will come from you. It not only said this in Isaiah 42 and 6. Watch what it says in Isaiah 49. Speaking of this light. And when did Yahweh give us light? Yom Echad, day one. So you can see what Yahweh was giving us. He gave us his word. And the entrance of his word, give it light. In the book of Isaiah 49, this is what it says. And we're going to start reading at the fifth verse. And now says Yahweh that formed me from the womb to be his servant. And a lot of people don't want to be a servant. And they don't understand that's one of the greatest things you can be is a servant. Watch what it says. To bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh, and my Elohim shall be my strength. And he said, it is a small thing, a light thing, that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So this same light that Yahweh said, let there be light on day one is the same light that's supposed to emit from you. To the extent, as I stated before, this light was in the past, this light is today, and this light will be in the future. The light that the nations and the people will follow is his servant. Just like Daniel. They said, man, the, you're like the holy Elohim. Because light was seen in you. And there will come a time where the creator prophesied in the book of Isaiah 60. Watch what it says. Just a couple more scriptures and then we will adjourn. Watch what it says in the book of Isaiah 60. The very first verse. Arise and shine. Why he want us to shine? For thy light is come. And the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. And why? Because watch this. For behold, Darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people. But Yahweh shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So much light, so much glory in the third verse. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. And we got to rise up. But we're not going to rise up because we're too worried and concerned about other things other than producing light in the world. Producing light for one another. Producing light in the earth. It, you, it don't matter that you're in captivity. Produce light. Don't matter if you scattered and broke up and the tribes are not unified. 
still produce light if the light that even the holy Elohims have is in you. And if it's in you, make no mistake about it, you will produce light. And matter of fact, you will produce so much light according to the scriptures. Watch what this says. In the 19th verse, violence, Isaiah 16, 19, violence shall no more be heard in our land, wasting nor destruction within our borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But Yahweh shall be unto thee an everlasting light, thy Elohim, thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for Yahweh shall be thy everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. No more darkness. All you will have is light. All those that Yahweh will call the remnant. Yahweh will be your light. That's how important the light is. And you got to see the light. I know the movies and the heathens, they tell you when you see the light, don't go into the light. And they don't make you scared of the light. No. No. You want to love the light. Because one day, it is already happening. It's, it's only happening if you already possess light. But everybody don't possess light. Therefore, they won't see. The scripture said, who is blind as my servant in deaf?" As my messenger that I've sent. Here it is, the last scripture in the book of Isaiah. And watch what this says. And we're going to read the the ninth chapter. The second verse, it says, the people that walked in darkness, in other words, they couldn't see, have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them have the light shined. That's what Yahweh is saying. Not in Jerusalem, not in Israel, but those who were dwelling in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. Yahweh's secret sign of one. And we're about to pray. And tomorrow, we will begin on the second or the next secret sign of Yahweh. And we'll let you know what that is tomorrow. Let us pray. Almighty Yah, creator universe, Elohim of Abraham, Yisak, and Yisrael. Thy servants humbly come before thee, thanking you, Almighty Yah, 
for your goodness, your love and kindness and tender mercies. We thank you, Yah, for your blessings. We thank you, Yah, for all things. Thank you, Yah, for another week. Thank you, Yah, for another day. Thank you, Yah, for keeping us, protecting us, watching over us, that we might serve thee, that we might labor and work in thee, and that we might have a heart and mind and spirit even to turn to thee so thou can turn to us. Please continue to teach us. Please continue to make the crooked things straight. Please continue to magnify thy law and make it honorable. For truly, Almighty Yah, there is no Elohim but thee. There is none beside thee, and there is none that can be likened unto thee, Yah. For we praise and worship you and you only, Yah, by saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yah. Yah is righteous. Yah is holy. And let Yahweh be magnified. And until tomorrow, Yahweh love you. And so do I. Shalom. Yeah. Uh -huh. Live free. Come on. Fourth try. For 100 centuries. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Take a look at my soul Nothing left but these hoes They tried to take me down But Yah is in control So now I ask you You suddenly black too The oppressor ain't fair when he attacked you Started wars cause they tried to tax you You should be asking who they was taxing Not what prices on our backs And the IRS wanted in on the back end was never down for emancipation Just good political relations To try to make a good case For the next election Yet Jim Crow came right back In the field certified With a government seal Crowley tried to stand up with zeal Sadly he thought that Jesus was real They gave us them fake moves And education to keep us concealed Take a look at my soul All I wanna do is go This horror of slavery For hundreds of centuries There's nothing left for you to hold All I want to be Is in my yard and live free For hundreds of centuries Of this horror of slavery But Yah, He is the King And He will save me So now I ask you Will you drop to your knees and beg y'all please? Don't you know that y'all is coming? It's like tomorrow. I can't even tell you the time on your Audemars. Just guard your heart, baby paw, baby dog. Don't cry. Paparazzi never cared about them tears. No way. Just fit my y'all all day. Rest in him just like the song say. I'm waiting for the day that he sit on the throne. Till then I'm stuck in my zone. Staying focused on the day when he finally take us home. Till then I'm prophesying to the dry bones. Till that day that I'm gone. What he has shown that Yahweh is Elohim is him and none alone. Take a look at my soul. All I wanna do is go. There's nothing left of me of this horror of slavery. For hundreds of centuries, nothing left for you to hold. My eye and live free. All I want to be is with my eye and live free. All I want to be is with my eye and live free. All I want to be is with my eye and live free. Slavery for hundreds of 
century Love for you too 